how to have my tea. All right, hey everybody. I wanna try something a little different here today. Rather than actually doing it, I wanna talk with you about what I do when I have a brand new song and I come into my studio here to record it. Now a new song means that we have melody and words and chords. But when it's finished, it needs to be all ready for you guys to hear, which means we need to have picked the style and what instruments we're gonna use and all the parts those instruments play uh, and lots more stuff. And um, the possibilities are just infinite. Uh, and so how do you make the decisions to get to the right stuff? Or at least how do you get to the good sounding stuff? And so that's what I wanted to talk with you about today and walk you through some of the things that I do uh, to narrow down and make the decisions and get to a finished song. Okay, first thing to remember when you're coming up with parts for a new song, you can never have too much cowbell. The number one rule, always remember the meaning of the song and let that help guide you in your musical decisions. Now the song we're going to do is called Sociopath. It was written by Matt Kramer and me and it is about a guy who is going to take you for everything that you have toss you aside and then move on to the next person and do the same to them. He's big, he's bad, he's powerful, he's sophisticated, he's manipulative. Um, and so these are the kinds of things, the mood that we want to get to when we uh, uh, start building the parts. Powerful, ominous, maybe a little bit scary. Those are the things I, I think that will guide us musically. We're just going to work on the intro for the sake of time. Now the song is in A minor, which is a good thing. Minor chords give you kind of a scary feeling. They're kind of sad and scary. Now the chords to the song are A minor to C to D and then G, D, and it starts over again. The A minor is okay. The C were there very quickly, but this D were on longer than any other chord in the progression. Uh, and it's too happy. It doesn't fit the ominous uh, nature of things. So I messed around for a while and I came up with this instead. And theory would tell you that it adds uh, tension and greatness to it. I won't go into why. But the cool thing from my perspective is, is when you listen to this chord in the progression, it gives it a character that I just haven't heard before in other songs. And as a producer, that's always what you're looking for. How can I do something that I, that I haven't heard before? Okay, check this out. love that chord. It just haven't heard anything like that and it just gives it this really cool unique character. It's a little bit ominous. A little bit scary, a little bit ominous. Perfect for this song. So we did this kind of on every uh, part to the song. Let's go over and, and check out all the individual tracks. We're back. Okay, we just finished working out the rhythm guitar and now we're going to work on the, the drums. Go back to what's the sociopath about? He's, you know, he's big, he's scary, ominous, and sophisticated. And I want to focus on sophistication because I don't know how to make drums sound scary. Maybe there's a way I haven't come across it yet. But sophistication, we can do on drums. We can uh, work uh, the left hand really heavy between the hi-hats and snare and come up with a pretty interesting beat. So I played around with uh, the beat and I came up with something uh, that I think is, is perfect for this. It's a heavy beat, but it's still got some sophistication in it. Check this out. Okay, there we go. Uh, to me, this is sounding like a pretty cool beat, and I'm, I'm very anxious to try it with the, the next thing that we're going to work on, which is the bass. For bass, I sort of immediately imagined this thing as being a biting, searing, cutting bass. And by that I mean it's not a bass part that just sits back and follows the chord progression. And it has a lot of notes of its own. It's doing sort of a melody of its own. In a mix, that causes it to drive uh, the song. First, let's just check out the bass by itself. To me, that sounded pretty cool. Let's have a listen to that bass part with the drums. All 
Okay, those are sounding pretty sweet together to me. That bass cuts through and drives the song. Let's add in the rhythm guitar and see how all three parts sound together. Woo! I love that. It's sounding really nice. So now all we need to do is put, um, put something on top, a hook, um, like a lead guitar. For inspiration there, I went back to the lyrics. You know, think about what's the first line of the song. Howl at the moon. How do we make a guitar howl? Well, without thinking too deeply about it, I thought, what if I just, just slam a note and then push it way up and hold it there and just let it echo and sustain? Um, Anyway, I did that. Let's put it in context with everything else and see what we got. So that really comes across for me. I think I heard a howling guitar and this powerful ominous music underneath it. I think it was just perfect for this song. <laughs>